All right, let's go. Three, two, one. Welcome back to another episode of Persuasion by the Pint. I'm Jonathan Taylor, along with Sean McCool. Sean, today we've got a guest joining us in the green room. We're going to be talking about a number of topics. Obviously, AI is going to pop its head at some point yeah. during the conversation, as it always does. I would think so with a title like using AI for content creation. I mean, I would think it would. Oh, man, you gave it away. <laughs> I think it would pop up every once in a while. Uh, yeah, content and uh, using AI for content, visual creation. Um, our guest today is uh, Phil Maziello. I hope I'm pronouncing that right. If not, I'm sure Phil is going to, wow. he's going to set me straight. Um, he is the founder and CEO of a company called uh, Crunch Growth. Uh, Revenue Acceleration Agency. He has a long history of success in business. This guy is a serial entrepreneur. He's been involved in these launch ventures like 800 Razors, uh, e-commerce company. Do you remember 800 Razors, Sean? I do not. Um, yeah, I do. I mean, I, it's, it, I remember that. Um, he's oh. been involved in a number of other uh, company launches. He's been involved in, uh, he's done a lot of e-commerce, mobile, uh, applications. And, um, he's written a few books. Um, one is think engage, thrive marketing actions to skyrocket your brand. He's also got a new book out, which I'm very interested in. Uh, I always love like entrepreneurship and, um, histories of business. He's got one called Empires and Entrepreneurs, How Business Shaped, uh, How Business Shaped the World, Stories of Entrepreneurs and Entrepreneurship. But um, he's got a long history of success in the business world, um, experience in e-commerce, mobile application marketing, Amazon seller marketing, and much more. Um, now he's in the world of, uh, obviously, AI and using that to uh, create content content. Um, teaching how that can uh, benefit so many companies out there in the content creation, not only just uh, written content, but also visual content as well. So sounds like um, a good guest. Let's bring him on. Let's bring him on. Phil, welcome to the show. <laughs> Thanks for having me. I appreciate it. Yeah. Good to have you, man. We're, we, uh, we get lucky with guests sometimes. So we get, uh, sounds like we leveled up this week. I'm impressed with Jonathan's booking skills this week. I'll, uh, I, I have a great story for you, Sean, about uh, 800 razors because one that you would appreciate, I guess. <laughs> why would he appreciate looking at because, Sean? Why would he appreciate that? <laughs> no. So can I tell, can I tell you a quick story? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So when we were launching 800 Razors, you know, you launch a business and you're struggling to break through the clutter. You're always trying mm -hmm. to find a way to get get people right uh, to 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 understand the brand. And there was a I don't know if you guys are baseball fans, but um, there was a guy, a pitcher named Brian Wilson, he used mm -hmm. to pitch for San Francisco Giants. Guy had an epic beard, epic, right? And then he went to to he got traded to the Dodgers, right? He had Tommy John surgery, and I saw it and I thought, you know why don't we offer him a million dollars to shave his beard with our razor? Oh, wow. I said, you know, all I need is for his people to respond back and say, we will run this by Brian. That's all I need. And I can push that out on PR, yeah. which is exactly what happened. I said, Hey, I want to offer him a million dollars to shave with our beard. I mean, shave his beard off with our razor and just to show how good it is. And, you know, there were stipulations that that MLB would have never approved. So we knew that it really couldn't go anywhere. But <laughs> we did that, and his people responded back and said, yeah, I want to buy him. And then we just hit it. And it got worldwide press. You, you still, to this day, you can go and, and uh, Google Phil Masiello 800 Razors Brian Wilson, and you'll see it all. And people were outraged, outraged that we would offer a guy a million dollars, right? So we were just getting battered on social media, which was pretty much Facebook at the time. And people were sending us body parts 
that they would shave with a price tag on them. Like I'll shave this for five thousand. I'll shave this for five thousand. So you know that stuff lasted about two weeks, and then it's it's starting to die down. Then all yeah. of a sudden, they catch TMZ catches Brian Wilson coming out of a gym in L.A. and they ask him, "Hey, are you going to uh, shave your beard off?" He's like, "I'm not shaving this beard off for anything." And then it starts again. People are outraged that a guy would turn down a million dollars to shave his beard. So <laughs> I thought about that when uh, that was brilliant. When, yeah, you know, that story. But so you. Was, knew- you actually knew ahead of time there's no way that this would fly because it had to go through the proper uh mlb channels and it probably wouldn't really work not. but you were you were using that you were like i'm gonna leverage this to the hilt i, I didn't have a million dollars <laughs> oh wow <laughs> so, i mean i knew that. yeah that we wanted bold. it to be in we wanted it to be, you know, and he had to wear the Dodger uniform, which MLB yeah. would not allow. And sure. we wanted it to be on the pitching mound at Dodger Stadium. And we knew MLB would not allow that either. So, but, you know, we knew he wouldn't do it, right? It was part of his personality. It was part of who he was. But, you know, the whole point was this guy who everybody knew had this epic beard. That was the whole point was just to get it out there. And so, yeah, it was, it was, it was, it was, it was bold. But, you know, yeah, sometimes I think in, in when you do startups, you have to be a little bold to get out there. I mean, DSC yeah. Dollar Tree Club did a great job with that video. Mm-hmm. Um, they were, fa- I thought that was fantastic. So, yeah, yeah sometimes you got to get out there. That's yeah, awesome. That's, that's a great, great story. <laughs> like that's, I'm going to tell that story somewhere. I don't know where, but I'm sure I'm going to tell it somewhere. <laughs> no, that's, that's fantastic. I mean, because you didn't have to have his approval. You just had to have the store, the, the press release out there that you did offer it. Yeah. Just that yeah. we're in discussions. That's all yeah. it was. We're in yeah. discussions with Brian Wilson to shave his beard for a million dollars. That right. was it. We're in discussions. Damn. So, and we were. It's a great phrase. Like, discussions. yeah, in discussions. <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So I didn't lie. <laughs> that is good stuff. All right. Well, before we get into uh, kind of this new world of AI, um, let's, let's, let's talk about our beverages. So we see you're drinking a green bottle of something. What do you got over there <laughs> on your end, Phil? Drinking Pellegrino. Pellegrino, the fancy, fancy uh, yeah. water, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would love to have, I, I used to love, you know, beer and wine mm-hmm. and a little bit of brown liquor. Yeah, <laughs> that's the best liquor for yeah. sure. The brown water. I love yes. it every now and then. Well, uh, Jonathan, what do you have on your end? You said you think you might have a good one? Yeah, I have something from uh, Boulevard Brewing Company. This is called a... Um, it's called a proper pour. It's, it sounds fancy. Yeah. Fancy. Good alliteration. <laughs> proper pour. Proper pour on persuasion by the pint. <laughs> wow. So this is a double barrel imperial stout, but oh, it's wow. got a little mix of uh, port wine in it. Um, so it's a sophisticated way to drink to enjoy port wine. Oh, wow. And I'm not a bit. I'm not a huge fan of port because to me it's a little sweet. So I'm not sure. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, you do. Okay. Um, a little, a little too sweet for my taste, but I'm, I'm will, more than willing to try this. And, uh, uh, this is about 13 and 13.8%. And honestly, I didn't realize that when I got this, I thought it would be like 9%. So I'm, I'm not sure what to expect here. That, yeah. Any of those uh, doubles, man, they're getting in double, double digits. Yeah. Sure, so. Right, it well. says they they've spent six months. Uh, they what they do is they put this. It's been six months in ruby port barrels um, that have been used at a distillery to age rye whiskey for three months, wow. and uh, so uh, should be interesting. Um, we'll see. I don't know what to expect. Yeah. All right. Well, on so my what end, what do you got? Yeah. So on my end, I have got something from Duclaw Brewing which are the makers of Sweet Baby Jesus, if you remember that. Oh, yeah. That beer. yeah. yeah um, this one is Pastry Arky. It is a s'mores dessert <laughs> stout. Oh, wow. <laughs> pastry um, Arky. That's really clever. Yeah. So mm-hmm. um, it's only 7.5%, which, you know, for this type of beer, that's pretty that's pretty moderate. Um, so, yeah, it's a 28th edition limited release and uh yes more stout so i'm ready to drink it it's already poured ready to go so let's uh let's cheers very it up good. gentlemen to cheers there you go <laughs> that wasn't loud enough there we go all right so uh phil we Ooh. do a quick rating one to five pints you can use decimals 
You can go as many places as you want. You can use pie if you want. Um, and rate your uh, your sparkling Pellegrino there on a scale of one to five. Yeah, I mean it's you know I I would I would rate it a I would rate it at a four. It's you know it's more about the mental piece, right? Because yes. I don't drink soda, so it's like the fizzy and it, which is more satisfying for me. It's the mouth feel. Is that what they call it? It there? is the mouth feel. feel. Yes. Oh, yeah. I saw in uh, there's a guy in New York who is a water sommelier. Oh yeah. And he actually goes through all the different types of water, and he actually charges people to come to classes to learn about the different types of bottled water and sparkling yeah. waters and all that kind of wow. stuff. Wow. You can make a business out of anything these days. So you can. It's, you it's can. crazy. Um, yeah. Well, Jonathan, how does your double shotgun, whatever, wine, Ugh, beer mix? So, so sweet. <laughs> oh, too sweet? Yeah, I'll never get this again. So like I, I, may, like, I don't even know if I'll finish this, this, uh, this bottle. It's it's just overly sweet for me, but I do taste. I mean, you definitely taste taste the uh, port, which I probably should have read everything a little more carefully. But um, yeah. <laughs> this will be one of those. Uh, Phil, as Sean say, when we the, if we go through something that we don't like, it's always a gift. Um, it gets gifted to someone. <laughs> yeah, next little party you get together, it's like, oh, got you a nice, really nice. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this mind, will definitely don't mind be that it's a four pack with one missing. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I like don't mind that. Wine. I like a good port wine. I, I do. It's probably the 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 beer. I mean that alcohol at thirteen and a half percent starts turning into liqueur. You know. Yeah. So yeah. it's probably yeah. I'm sure it's a mix of both that that yeah. high. Uh, high content and then uh so what's your what's your score Whew. rating oh man this is getting in my opinion i'm giving this a about a two one oh that's pretty that's Oof. the lowest you've had in a while you were due yeah. for a bad one <laughs> was due. You, you were on a streak there <laughs> due. Um, and i hate that because i've had a bull we've had a boulevard on here before and it's been yeah. really good but this one's not not good so so mine is a really good, like the seven and a half percent alcohol. It's not too much, not too rich. Um, it's not overly like, even though it says dessert stout, it's not like super sweet at all. It's not like an imperial stout. Yeah. Um, so I think it's really good. I'm going to give this a 4.5. Oh, wow. Very nice. Yeah, it's it's solid for sure. Very good. And it comes in a big can, so it's nice. You get an extra, yeah. You get a little extra. Got to give some credit for the uh, creativity there. I mean, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they, they do some good stuff. I mean, they're, I mean, the, the sweet baby Jesus brand mm-hmm. is awesome. I mean, yeah. Really great. yeah. You know, they almost got, they got banned in Virginia for a while when they first came out with that. In really? Certain, in certain grocery stores. It was, right. it was the grocery store chains, not the state ah. or anything, but like people for were using the name. Yeah. Well, it was, it was consumer feedback. People were freaking uh, out. And I was like, well, what okay. are you doing in the beer aisle anyway that you saw it? Like, <laughs> what? <laughs> What's going on here? That's right. Exactly. So. Yeah, they're local to me. That that Duclaw is local to me. I Are you mean, in Northern oh, yeah. Virginia, Maryland? Maryland. Okay. Maryland. Yeah. 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 Was yeah. it the yeah. um, Wegmans or is that what it? The Wegmans. Big, yeah. Or what's yeah. the the really nice big flagship stores up there? Is that the way? Is that Wegmans or is yeah? There... Wegmans has a, a a great store in uh, yeah a couple of them. Yeah. You know, but there and uh, but Duclaw. Um, I mean, they started down uh, somewhere towards Annapolis, and they had they've been doing it for quite some time. I mean, they yeah, they were the early product. craft beer people for sure. Yeah, the product was always great. They had a place at the at BWI Airport, um, you know, which was always good before you got on the plane. Yeah, mm-hmm. after you got on the plane. <laughs> yeah, because the the beer on the plane is not good. It's no, yeah, yeah it's pretty lousy actually. So, <laughs> um, so yeah. Well, let's jump into this. I'm excited to hear. Um, so, Phil, just for some reference, uh, we've been talking, you know, we talk a lot about sales, persuasion, copywriting, marketing. But the last, you know, three or four months, five months, like the rest of the world, we've really been AI keeps coming up because it's yeah. it's it's taking over. I mean, it's it's a powerful tool. Um, I think this is like, you know, Internet on steroids, right? Those of us who were around for dot com crash and the hype. This feels different. I'm curious just first before we get into specifics, like AI in general, like, you know, you've seen the internet, you've seen social media, you've seen AI now. How is this? Is it different in your opinion? And if so, how? 
it's a tool, right? It's not gonna, um, you know, the internet is 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 different. Like, you know, you, we, we created e-commerce out of the internet. We created uh, email out of the internet. So we created a lot more. It's it's more than just a tool. I think that's all encompassing. But AI yeah. is really a the way we look at it. And we've been using AI tools for about you know two years in different ways in the business and and. The way we look at it is it's it's a tool and it has to be deployed in a certain way, similar to an app or similar to to a website. Now, it's more powerful, but still, if you just focused in on content, for example, we do a lot of work with building um, uh, building product descriptions, whether it's on Amazon or Walmart or, you know, websites or whatever. And in that particular case, which is where we've probably been using it the longest, um, you know, you still have to run it through like a Grammarly and you still have to get somebody to edit it or you can't just pull it. Right sure. Out. Um, so, you know, these folks that talk about, um, you know, just hooking it up and, and creating content on your website, you know, Google's not that stupid and they're going to, they, they, they already, you already know um, Google is, has bots out there looking for SEO content. That's just ripped out of AI and they downplay, they downgrade it. So your site will actually get penalized if you're just pulling, you know, creating these, um, you know, APIs of just pulling your, you know, this data out of AI and every day and creating content. So you have to yeah, be it, careful. If you're not yeah. using it intelligently, it does remind me of like article spinners from like early 2000s, you yeah. know, 2010, maybe um, where you just put in some stuff and it spun it. It feels a lot like that if you don't do it intelligently. Yeah. And then, you know, guys that were doing, uh, you know, just, uh, you know, black hat SEO stuff and just b bombarding pages back in the early days with, you know, just a page of keywords. And, you know, Google caught on to that pretty quickly and started, you know, taking steps to ban it. Amazon Amazon does too, to a certain extent when you're building product. Decisions. So you do have to be intelligent. The, the place where we see it um, most useful for, say, e-com, e-com companies is setting up chatbots and things like that because you then the customer doesn't you sort of guide the customer's um you know uh questions and i'm sure you guys have seen that a ton of ways on uh, you know so i think that's a powerful thing i'm not a big fan of the imagery that comes out of it you know we still do uh a lot of um video and and imagery for mm -hmm. social media for our social media clients using real images we've done a lot of things with it and there's some funny things you can do with it where you know it's ai you know and you're taking an image and you're sort of creating this i don't know caricature out of it that that i agree with but people that are just pulling you know, I, I think people are misunderstanding the tool and they're just using it for all these different things. And it's be, it's going to become a mess for a little while till somebody streams streamlines it out. So that's a great um, you said you, you think people are misusing it. So that that's a good segue into like, how are you using it? What do you what do you feel like the, the right way? And especially for content creation, I'd love to hear kind of how you guys are doing it at Crunch Growth. And yeah, just kind of run from there. Yeah, I'll tell you. Um, we we use it for um for text content right if we're like i said if we're building product descriptions bullet points uh for a new product on amazon mm -hmm. uh, we'll you know we'll use ai but you have to be you have to be very um you have to be very detailed in what you're asking it to do and mm -hmm. you've got to give it some background and then it'll spit out a very good like product description. If you say, you know, give me, you know, 500 words or a thousand words on a product description of this, you know, but you have to tell it to act as a, you know, act as a marketer, act as a content creator, you know. Um, but then again, we take that, put it through Grammarly, clean it up. And then we have a, an in-house person that edits just to make sure that it all makes sense. And then we put it on, so, you know, bullet points, um, product descriptions, product names. Uh, same thing on on uh, websites. We'll do the we'll, we'll do the exact same thing. Um, you know, we've written uh, content blog posts with it. We've written. Uh, we have a, a, a you know a site that uh, is called Get Uplifted. It's it sells um, um, powders, uh, you know, green drink and protein powders, things like that. And you know, we've we've it's done a really good job with creating 
content for that. The other thing we use it for quite often is uh, posts uh, for social media on mm -hmm. you know, Facebook, Instagram, etc. But again, you have to be careful and you have to be clear on what you're asking it to do and what you want to come out of it. And then sure. you still have to you still have to use it in an intelligent way and you have to edit it. Right. Yeah. You just pull it yeah. straight out, I think. Well, I mean, I think that's true. I mean, I, I've I've been a copywriter for direct response copywriter for 15 years now. Um, you know, if I was going to get a junior writer to help me, I'd have to do the same thing with them. Right. I mean, I'd still have to create a, a basic brief, some avatar research, you know, whatever that they would work off of. I couldn't just say, you know, go write me a Facebook ad, 250 words and expect them to nail it. Right. They, they'd have right. to have some background. So how much I'm curious, like how much time do you see this is say, are you saving time? Cause there, there seems to be two camps. There's people like, Oh, I'm saving a lot of time. Now I can do other things or I'm doing five times more output. Like which camp do you tend to fall into? I, I think it gets you 60% of the job done. Right. So we, we're running ads, you know, Amazon, Facebook, you know, Google, et cetera. So we're, we're constantly writing, ads and you get to the point where you almost you know you've almost run out of ideas sometimes mm -hmm. about how many how many different ways you can say something and yeah. i think that's where it helps us because you can say give me 10 you know give give me 10 different versions of this right. and but i think it, it gets you 60 percent of the way there uh, as far as time goes you know it, it's a time saver but is it saving us uh, you know, a tremendous amount of time. It's probably save. It probably, I would say, if I looked at the the total time we spend doing content creation um, for ads, for posts, for for that type. So I would say it probably saves us 30, 30 to forty percent of our time. Um, and I think that in some cases we get better, uh, we get a better output than if we did it, you know, ourselves. But I'm on some of these groups for, that are using ChatGPT and. I mean, I look at what some of these guys are doing and I think to myself, you know, you, you missed the point. They're just banging out content and yeah. it's just garbage because, it, yeah. you know, like the, the attorneys in New York that just believed what came out of it. And, and meanwhile, it was citing cases that didn't exist. You have to be careful, man. Yeah, you we talked we talked about that on last week's show. It's like it'll cite sources that look like like legit citations. Yeah, and they're try just to look them up completely. They don't even, they don't yeah. even exist. Yeah. yeah. References that have no existence whatsoever. <laughs> I mean, like no sourcing whatsoever. So, um, so yeah, that's, that's, and I, I definitely agree. Like, I think more than the time saving, one of the things I'm noticing is that it's, um, it's an energy saving, mm -hmm. like in human energy is, is like, I'm not emotion. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm not fretting over like, Oh my God, I need to come up with another idea. I can just say, give me two yeah. more ideas. And I pick the one that's the best. And so then, there's an and energy then, and then conservation it. that's there with this tool. I think more so than even there's definitely a time savings, but definitely um, an energy savings for me personally. Would you agree with that or? I, absolutely. I mean, like, that's what, that's sort of what I was alluding at. You just put it in better words. You, you know, sometimes we just run out of ideas. You know, we've, we've got to write ads multiple times during the day. We're running ads for so many different companies and you, you know, it gets to the point where you, you think I can't, I can't think of another catchy line, but then if you, if you say, give me, you know, 10 ideas or concepts and then you refine it, you know, so it gets you, it gets you started, gets you about 60% of the way there. Then you, you, you continually refine it. And we use a specific tool that has a lot of templates. It's mm -hmm. chat GPT is a part of it, but there's so much more, you know, to it. So um you mentioned yeah. the the visual aspect it's, it's, so you're not impressed as of yet is that what you were saying earlier on the on the visuals like graphics logos things like that or have what's your experience there yeah i mean for for certain things that that are not uh, like yeah. I, I know people that are using it that are trying to create good imagery mm -hmm. for that to be used on social right to, to be used in ads i don't I haven't I haven't been that impressed. We we have used it for, you know, some logo refinement, logo design. It's come yeah. out with some good. It's come out with some good ideas. But again, then, 
you, you take the concept of what it just gave you and you give it to the designer and say, here's an idea to run with for this, right? Um, like, I'll give you an example. We have one, one company, they, they're having their 50th anniversary. It's actually, they actually have two different divisions mm -hmm. and they wanted a combined logo uh, and they wanted it to have the 50th anniversary. So we, right. we provided that information to the tool and we, and it came out with a really good concept. It didn't, the, the logo wasn't refined enough, but it came out with a good concept. And we tried it a couple of different ways. And then we just gave it to the designer and said, here's the concept that we think is the best. Then the designer can design it quickly. So ah, it, I see. You know, so I, you I, give I, them, like, yeah. Well, I, that's I, another, that's another way you're giving an artist kind of some, a visual starting point, um, so to speak, you know, some, some, some ways to, I, you know, it's, Kind of like you, Sean, you talk about as a copywriter having a blank screen, an artist with a blank canvas is like, okay, so let's well, see. Well, <laughs> you know, it's kind of like if you've ever gone on, you know, Fiverr or Upwork and you try to yeah. get a logo designed, if you don't give them some good references yes. to go off yep. of, it'll Absolutely. be all over the place, right? right. Yep. But if you can narrow down and say, hey, this is close, but we'd love to see you refine this. Mm -hmm. That's where I think a lot of creatives yeah. thrive because they don't have to figure out what you want. That's one of the hardest right. things as a copywriter was like figuring right. out what the client wanted. <laughs> if I could get 80% there, then I could polish the last 20% <laughs> sure, yeah. Yeah. so fast. And typically know? anything you outsource is never, it's not even good the second time. Like it, there's a, there's <laughs> right. a lot of revisions. There, so, yeah. I mean, I used to joke with my clients when I was, you know, trying to sell them. Um, and so you've run some, agencies and stuff i mean you know this like they'd say yeah you just just do whatever you think is working i'm like oh yeah, my oh god yeah. that's the kiss of death right there yeah. <laughs> it's, it's I, and i and I, would, I came up with this analogy i was like okay i want you to imagine you're ford you hire me and you say yeah. sean we'd want you to write an incredible ad for our, our this vehicle we're, we're coming out with and i'm like okay is it a car or a truck doesn't matter just just yeah. you know do whatever you think's best and i'm like well it does matter <laughs> It yeah. matters quite a bit. Um, and I feel like AI can get you, like you said, 60% of the way there to give your creative team and your editing team, like to really polish it off. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Is that, what, is that what you're finding? Yeah, absolutely. That's how we, that's how we treat it. I don't yeah. think we've ever used anything that came straight out and yeah. just yeah. used it the way it is. Right. Um, what was interesting was a friend of mine got so enthralled with, um, with it, with this tool, uh, we use a tool called Jasper. I don't know if you guys are familiar. Oh with yeah, that. Anyway, yep, yep. I love it. Um, but they have temp. The reason I love it is because they have so many templates and guidelines and stuff like that. So it's just not Chat GPT. Chat GPT is a part of it. But anyway, um, and a friend of mine, it's about maybe six months ago or so. Mm -hmm. He says, "Hey," he sends me a message. He goes, "Hey, we're going to have this um, challenge." I said, "What's that?" He said write a see if you can get the tool to write a book mm -hmm. and i said you know you can get it dude but i don't know he said and and i think there was a time limit you got to do it in like four days i said you know i'd love to do it but i don't have four days worth of time to sit here and play with this tool <laughs> maybe you guys do but you know go ahead and um but a couple of people that did it i was impressed with what 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 came out of it um, you know, was it the greatest book in the world? No, but I think for writing a, you know, he wrote like a hundred page book, you know, the, he, he clamped down in the weekend. He basically got, I guess he probably ordered some pizzas that came in, but he stayed in his office and just, <laughs> just pounded it out and, and sure. created this book. And it, you know, it wasn't half bad. Yeah. 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 I, th I think I've noticed like, especially if you want to do longer stuff like that, like, you, you really have to take it in stages where it's like, okay, give me an outline. First of all, give me a concept for a book. I'm in this niche. This is my avatar. It'll give you, all right. I like number three, right. Based on number three, give me what you would suggest for the table of contents. Yeah. Right. And then it'll give you the table of contents. Then you got to go one chapter at a time and say, all right, give me a, give me your um, draft or your synopsis of chapter one. Yes. And meanwhile, yeah. you're copy and pasting all this stuff into <laughs> a Google Doc. Right. If you try to, if you just sit down and say, write me a book for this person, this niche, like it'll never do it. And that's, I no. think that's what people are expecting because mm -hmm. of the yeah. hype. But you really do have to take it just step by step, which 
if you think about it, it makes sense. Like that's how anybody else in the world, any creative, anybody else would do it. Right. But yeah. we expect because it's a machine that it could just somehow magically do everything and maybe it'll get there in the next two years. Um, I wouldn't be surprised if it does. Um, but yeah, it's not there. Certainly not there yet. I think it's, it, it, I see a lot of it on, like, again, like these discussion groups and, you know, Reddit and, 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 and Facebook and other places where these guys are talking about it and how they're using the tool and they're putting up examples. And yeah. on, you know, one guy did a whole two paragraph post, you know, and then he puts at the end, this was made with AI. Aren't you impressed? And I said, no, it makes no sense. No, it makes no sense. <laughs> I just don't think great. Read it. <laughs> Like, no, actually, that sucks. But okay. yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did you actually re? Did you proofread this after it's been? Yeah, like, you know, you know. There's a tool called Grammarly. You can put it in there, <laughs> and it'll tell you. You know, and there's these other tools. I mean, Grammarly is technically an AI tool, I guess. Right. But um, you know, it's also for me. I, you know, I tend to get verbose if I write and Grammarly mm -hmm. has helped me. I've been using Grammarly for years and it helps me take out those extraneous words that I don't need. I go, Oh yeah, that makes sense. It's much more concise, but yeah, you, know, you, you might like, uh, one of our guests, man, it's been a while now, probably a year, year and a half, I guess, uh, writing without bullshit. Oh yeah. Uh, <laughs> great book. He was a great guest. Uh, yeah. he, he's, he's like Good Grammarly time, in, in human form. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, like he's really, he was really good. Um, Phil, I want to back up a little bit and kind of just get your philosophy. Um, like I love tactics, I love tools and things like that, but I think what really moves the needle, you know, for both our listeners and for myself and, you know, Jonathan and I do this podcast for ourselves, not for anybody else, but, um, <laughs> to talk, hash things out, True. um, kind of what's your, what's your philosophy on content creation, um, in general? Like, what do you what's the ethos behind the way Phil does and has his team do content? We're, you know, we, we're working with such a diverse group of clients, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, we, we go from food to, you know, to uh, technology, to concrete construction. Yeah. I mean, just a ton. And what we're always trying to do is make something compelling that somebody wants to stop and read. So if we're making a post where, you know, if we're making an ad because it's so difficult today to break through the clutter, I mean, mm -hmm. I, you know, so we're always trying to find something and it's not just words. It's a combination of words and imagery and or words and video that will stop somebody and go, Oh yeah, I, I like this, you know, let me, let me pay attention to it. And sometimes it can be, you know, you're taking a dry, like a dry um, uh, company that's maybe doing concrete, right? And you, you're trying to make it fun and funny. And we've yeah. done a lot of that. And so it's it's editing and it's the words you use and it's how you use the words. So that's what we're always trying to do is just get to the get to the consumer, the end user, get them to stop and look at it and go, you know, rather than just putting up massive amounts of content and just saying, I want to post three times a week or I want to post five times a week. You know, that's great, but you really want to post to get people to stop and look, you really want to run an ad that somebody stops and goes, Oh, that's, that's interesting. You know, what is, really what is the, what do you, what, what are kind of the ideas that you think are stopping people these days? Cause, cause AI is just going to make everything more cluttered, right? It's easier to put out content. Like it's going to get more and more cluttered, um, yeah. more banner blindness, more, all that stuff, you know? So like, yeah what are some of your core principles like Ray Dalio style, I guess, like what are your core principles that like to create content that stops people? Babies and dogs. <laughs> All right. I love that. Now that we got to unpack. <laughs> Babies and puppies will stop people in their stride. No, uh, it, it depends that's on true. it. That's yeah, that true. <laughs> we, we try to um, look I thought that was code for something at first, but now I'm like, oh, actually, yeah. That's no. <laughs> no, 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 really. Babies and puppies. No, um, um, I use that a lot uh, with, with people because, no, but but you think about the consumer today. You think about, you know, and the consumer could be even a business. Right? You're They're bombarded with serious. Everybody's bombarded with serious. Life is serious, right? We got yes. wildfires in Canada that are, you know, yeah. creating, you know, dust clouds over New York. And us. Oh, my God. Serious. Just real quick on that, like last night yeah. we were watching the news, 
because <laughs> my my wife's family lives up in that like Connecticut that area, right? So my wife flips on Fox News, and as a copywriter, like I'm tuned to like words, right? You know, yeah. And the words, the headlines they were creating around this the smoke, like yeah. apocalyptic, and like <laughs> like it was so over the top, like yeah. trying to grab people's attention. Sure, it was just yeah. it was just crazy. Um, yeah, so yeah, it's like, and that's it's happening everywhere. But man, the news is getting crazy with it. Like they're, it, it's so sensationalized. Mm-hmm. It's, it, but it's everywhere, right? You yeah. read the headlines on your phone every morning when you read the news or whatever. So we always try and go for the lighthearted and funny because yes. people want funny. And we do do a lot of things, even if it's not necessarily um, a, a direct connect to a brand, we will use something like dogs or kids or anything that, that you can bring. Like we do a lot of things with that, you know, SpongeBob, and one hour later, you know, that whole, uh, we, do that. <laughs> yeah. we use that a lot, you know, in different ways, uh, you know, and, um, but, you know, because we're, we're creating, you know, we create video content uh, every day and, you know, for different, for, for different clients in different ways. And so they're giving us, they'll give us raw material. That's just horrendous and you know you're trying to make it into something so you'll cut it and splice it to a point where you know and put it together and throw these different images in so that it's not just like this boring piece of you know uh, showing you know concrete being coming out of a truck or you know some construction happening you know, or even with food i mean everybody yeah. you know we we have a couple of food clients different in different ways and you know there's only so many recipes you can look at or you know so you you sort of do it in a you know in a in a funny way or a fun way where the the music has to be right and um, the imagery has to be right and what's happening has to be right and the words that you're putting across the screen have to be right so we try and put a lot of thought into it and, and we do use ai for that too to come up with some funny taglines or funny lines or funny you know, and we, we tend to always gravitate towards that because when you really look, when you start to analyze the the videos and the, the posts and, the, you know, the ads that people have stopped and looked and paid attention to, they generally 99% of the time happen to be have to be funny. Yeah. You know, and uh, yeah. And so many businesses are, are scared of that to like yeah. Be, yeah. <clears throat> be funny and humorous because business is so serious. Um, but yeah, it's, it's proven over and over dollar shave club. We mentioned earlier, um, you know, one of my friends here who, who got famous, uh, JP Sears, you know, he got famous for be- becoming funny. Like he was a serious yeah. life coach and he got famous for becoming, you know, yeah. the, um, the spiritual guru type, you know, and did these YouTube ch- channels, like all that stuff, but people are still so scared of, why do you think people are so scared of, of humor? And also, like, at the same time, I know there's some, even in, you know, copy classes I've taken or copy courses are like, oh, you can't do humor. It's hard to do humor in, in copy. But I agree, like, ChatGBT has done, has put out, I ask it to do funny stuff all the time. And it's actually yeah. really good at it. It's one, I think it's stronger at funny than it is, like, serious <laughs> copy. Hey, you've done some Seinfeld stuff lately, right? Yeah, I, I'll ask you to do a Seinfeld <laughs> episode on just random stuff. Like, I'll say, insert this this customer's product into a Seinfeld episode. And I'll yeah, describe yeah. the product a little bit. And it knows the characters. It seems like chat, like, really loves pop culture. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, yeah. So it knows a lot of pop culture reference, but it knows Seinfeld better than it knows David O. <laughs> for sure. Right? Maybe if I put in Mad Men. Well, be that's not a bad thing because, yeah, you know, people want to be entertained more than they want to be educated. Well, it, sometimes. it was what Eugene Schwartz said in a talk is like, if you're not, if you're not watching the most popular movies, if you're not watching all this yeah. stuff, like you're out of touch mm-hmm. yeah. market. So I'm yeah. curious though, like, um, why do you think businesses are so scared of humor and how do you get your clients to, to buy into that approach? Well, the thing I always tell the clients are, I don't know what the answer is, but mm-hmm. I'm gonna, I'm, if we're going to run an ad, we're going to run three or four different versions of the ad and we're going to find out which one works the best mm-hmm. and we're going to try and mix it up. Serious, funny, you know, you just got to trust me that, 
you know, and 90% of the time they do. And 90% of the time, 99% of the time, the funny one always rises to the top. And once you, once they see that, and once they see that they actually get something for that funny, somebody shares it, somebody, people, you know, it's getting more shares. It's getting the brand out there. They're getting clicks back to the, um, product page or whatever, wherever we're driving it to, then they start to realize, Hey, but I think there's a lot of, I think there's a lot of reasons. And I'm going to tell you, um, my whole feeling about businesses and, you know, businesses that are say over a hundred million that are out of the stage of I'm a startup that are, that are in the stage of I'm a fairly stable business. People are afraid to take risks. Everybody's afraid to lose their job. They're afraid to take risks. They're afraid to fail. And so yep, yeah. they're afraid that the president of the company is going to come down on them and that they're going to lose their job if they make this decision. And so uh, generally, when we communicate with a lot of our clients, we're dealing on a very high level. I mean, we may get pushed down and this is going to be, you know, Mary's going to be your point of contact from now on. But where we start is here. And I do that intentionally because. I don't, I, you try and go in too low, forget it. Nobody wants to take, nobody wants to make a decision. And, and, and I think that that's a, one of the downfalls to business today. And that's why businesses don't, aren't progressing at the rate. When, yeah. when you really look at the big businesses, they don't, they can't innovate. So they wind up buying, you know, brands that start up, you know, that innovated in there and then they they suck them into the fold and then they kill them because yeah. you know you, you've got this you know, that was a bit I mean, you know, I mean, dollar shave clubs are a great example i mean right yeah. i mean right. they they started with this viral sensation then what gillette bought them whoever bought them and you know a lot of money yeah you yeah, bought them paid a lot of money for them and now you never hear about dollar shave brand club anymore creativity no, they- entertainment is gone I mean, yeah, now it's just BFC. It's on the shelf in Walmart. It's just a boring brand, just like that. And you, you you know, when, when he did such a great job, I mean, I think, um, you know, he was a very creative guy. And again, he had the same problem. I mean, people don't realize like he was out there for, I think a year and a half before the, 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 the video. And he was trying all kinds of things to get movement on razors. And, and then he came up with that, but he's a funny guy and his Mm -hmm. personality came through. And I think, um, you know, he did a, I, I, you know, he did a really good job. I can never take it. They were competitive ours, but they did a great, great job. Sure. And uh, I can never take that away from him. I use that, I use that example all the time with, with, uh, I think, uh, clients. yeah, I think Ryan Reynolds, Brian Reynolds is another good example. You know, he's exactly. got his own marketing firm and yeah. he does two things. He does funny, which is just him, his brand, yeah. but he does fast. Right? Yeah. Like I, I read something about his stuff that, you know, he tries to turn around, like current events or current, you know, controversy, like they have a whole system where they can turn out a commercial in like 48 hours or something, you know, yeah. Yeah. it's just like, he's, he understands the urgency of a, of a moment and to capitalize on it. And I think mm-hmm. too many people overthink those moments and, you know, don't take the risk of like, okay, let's, let's jump on this yeah. Peloton, you know, whatever, or. And he's, he's witty and funny <laughs> enough to be able to, understand how to you know but you know he's not doing all that. of it so to be able to pass that on and give people yeah. permission to do that yeah is, and show I them think, that. also a great yeah. leadership skill absolutely yeah. you know funny or die is another great group that were yeah. uh, you know, <laughs> they used to make great you know great videos and we talked to them a long time ago maybe 10 years ago or something about we we were looking for a video and they came up with some great you know, great concepts and they push the, you know, they push the edge, but it's, you know, it's funny, you know, and uh, I think people appreciate that. They want to, they want to break from their day where everything's serious. I'm at work, yeah. everything's serious. I go home, the news is everything serious. Yeah. People so, want to be entertained. You know, it's, they want to be entertained. Um, Look at, yeah. you know, Duolingo, I think does a great job with their mascot owl on TikTok, right? It's not going to generate, and, and people say to me, well, you know, they do a great job. Those are funny little short clips on TikTok, but that's not going to generate sales. No, it's not going to generate sales. What it generates is a lot of views. And so then it sticks to your head because you're always going and looking at Duolingo. And when it's time for you to take that trip to France and you want to learn French, you remember Duolingo. Right. <laughs> so yeah. that's where the power is. <clears throat> so Exactly. Yeah, that top of mind awareness mm-hmm. um, that I think a lot of, especially smaller companies, and direct response crowd, which, you know, I come from, um, and I've always, I've never been like a, 
dogmatic di- direct response brand is bad you know and i've never been yeah. i've always seen the value of both like powerful branding good direct response and then i i would definitely throw you know humor into that as well um so what do you you know pixar I, direct for, response. I have no no problem with direct response we did yeah. the art we in the past so yeah where are you based out of you're in california i'm in austin texas but i'm actually getting ready to move east to tampa so we're running out of water here. I, I like to drink. Uh, so like, I, I feel like we, I'm going to go East where there's more water because we're running out of water here in Texas. <laughs> All the Californians, they drank like me dry. Now they're coming here and drinking, <laughs> drinking us dry. Um, you know, Pix, uh, Pixar has like a formula they use for their animated movies and yeah, things like that. Yeah. Do you have like a, a formula that you use for humor or is it very intuitive? Like do you have some kind of key concepts you use for humor? I think it depends on the brand that we're working on. And then when we, we hit on it, we're, we're always looking for a system. We're always looking for something that we can replicate, you know, not, not exactly, but you're replicating the, the sort of formula, you know? So um, there, there, one brand that uh, we work with, which is in the uh, hot sauce world, right? The uh, founder of it was an entrepreneurial guy and he, uh, he, he, he used to do these, uh, videos with wearing a straight jacket, you know, because the sauce was so hot and, you know, and all that. <laughs> but it, it worked and people loved it, you know, and, and so you take that and put it in different scenarios and now you've got, you know, something sort of funny that people can, you know, you can consistently run. They, they see it and they recognize that it's an icon, it's a guy in a straight jacket, you know, and all of a sudden <laughs> you can take that to a bunch of different places. Um, you know, there's another one that we're working on now, which is, you know, doing, um, you know, what's, would you rather, would you rather, right? Sending somebody out to interview people, you generally at colleges, because that's the demographic, it's young folks. And, uh, you know, would you rather, you know, eat this or eat that, right? And you're giving them the choice of, you know, eating this, you know, good product or what's behind door number, you know, door number two. Yeah. And door number two could be, you know, could be grass. It could be, yeah. you know, whatever. Mm-hmm. It Fear just factor. Makes, Fear factor yeah, comes to mind. Yeah. Funny, you know, and it's like you get the reaction. You know, John, uh, a guy named John Scully, was a uh, was a, an investor in one of my companies. You know, he used to be yeah, a CEO, CEO of Apple, right? Computer. Yeah. So he was an investor in one of my companies, but he his early career was Pepsi, right? He did he came up with the Coke Pepsi challenge way back in the, I don't know you know if that's before uh, be, before all of our times, but anyway, his point with it was. Um, He said, you know, it wasn't about whether Pepsi or Coke were better. It was about the reaction of the people. He said, and that's what what made it effective. He said, (laughs) they drank Pepsi and they were like, wow, I didn't, I I didn't realize. And that's what you wanted to capture. So I always think about that when we're trying to do things. It's like, you, you really, it's not about, you know, whether this is better than that or whether this is a good product or not. It's about doing something to get a reaction from somebody. Sure. People go, oh. So, yeah, that reminds me of the, uh, I think he, he was with Pepsi before Apple, I believe. Yeah. Pepsi. Cause I read Apple. this, the story where Steve jobs, uh, I think he met with him said, you want to sell sugar water the rest of your life or something like yeah, that. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Interesting. Interesting guy. He, yeah. he, he was the CEO of Apple. His brother was the president of Heinz uh, USA. Wow. So that's cool. Yeah. Guess their parents yeah. were proud, huh? yeah. <laughs> and they were both investors in eight hundred razors. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So was That's Michael cool. Phelps, the, uh, ah, the swimmer. That's awesome. Oh wow! Yeah, yeah. because we made this. You know, Michael used to shave his whole body. Yeah, and you know, I used to do triathlons before I gained a little bit of weight, but I used to do triathlons, and I used to shave. You know, because swimming, you know, you're always looking for an edge, and but you know, if you're in the pool all the time and you have to shave your body, I mean, it's, it's, it's a, it's a unique feeling when you jump into that pool. (laughs) And so he, Michael was from here and he has a, uh, he, the gym that he used to swim at, it's not that far away. And I was there one day taking classes in how to be a better swimmer. And I saw him and I said, you know, try these two products. One was a, a, a before and one was an after. And I gave him the razors I said, try them and see if it doesn't help uh, you know, and he did. And then I got a call like a couple of weeks later from his P 
people saying, Michael wants more of this. How can we get it? And I said, I'll send it to him. And then, um, yeah, then they got involved and, uh, you know, it was good. So nice guy. How, nice so, guy. yeah, that's interesting. How did, did you sell that company off or? Did... Yeah. I mean, the market was so, so saturated. My concept was to focus more on skincare, right? We had had a skincare company with Carol Alt. We did raw beauty and, um, it was a shopping channel brand, DRTV and some other things. Yeah. And um, we, so what, during that, we, we were going to go into the female razor business as part of it. Mm -hmm. And then we, we talked with one of the largest razor companies and we got, we had a deal for them to supply our razor. And then uh, we really, as we thought about it, we thought, Hey, this is a separate business. And so, but we wanted skincare to be a big component of it because we had this backbone of manufacturing and they had some unique ingredients to put in for pre-shave, post-shave that really did a number. And so we were looking at, at it from, you know, using the razors were just a tripwire just to get people to come in uh, sure. and really buy the skincare, right? right? I didn't care if I made money on the razors. I cared more about skincare. Yeah. And um, so that was how, how it happened. But, you know, everything was happening so fast in that environment. VSC came out, Harry's came out, you know, all these companies and, you know, I I had to take investors in and so I didn't have control and at that mm -hmm. point so when it came time we got an offer from one of the competitors and everybody was like I think you need to take this I said, well, you don't see my vision and they were like I don't care <laughs> you take the offer yeah, so no. damn your awesome. vision let's take the money right <laughs> yeah exactly. that's exactly what it was yeah so, I, you know. so um so Phil, what are you up to these days and what kind of where you see um, kind of the future? I mean, obviously AI, but like, like, kind of what are you up to these days and how can people um, kind of follow some of what you're up to? Yeah. So I, I, I do a couple of things. One is I have, uh, I have Crunch Growth, which is a marketing agency, but we build websites, host websites, manage websites, that kind of thing. When we also, we handle social media, we handle ads. Uh, we do a lot of work on Amazon. You know, I, I'm very familiar with Amazon from all those prior businesses that, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an expert. I wrote a book on Amazon. And mm -hmm. um, so we um, so we have crunch growth. Uh, and then I also. Um, yeah, I also uh, I mentor uh, young entrepreneurs at both University of Maryland School of Entrepreneurship and also some of the incubators downtown, which I really like doing. Um, I think that uh, I I think that some of these guys um, they get I I think the press sort of uh, gives people a, a skewed idea of how difficult it may be to uh, raise capital today. You know. They seem to think that I'm going to write a business plan. I'm going to walk into a room. I'm going to present the business plan. And these guys are just going to throw money at me. And that's just not the way it works. But <laughs> it's almost like I try and talk them out of raising money at all because I think it's almost a, they act like it's a badge of honor. But it's yeah. really not because, yeah. you know, it's your idea. Run with it. See how far you can get. See if you can run it profitably. Come up with a way to get your business out there profitably, right? Don't go yeah. after trying to raise money. So, that's one thing I do. Um, and, you know, crunch growth. We also, in very uh, unique circumstances, if we see a product or a brand or a company that's a startup that doesn't have enough money for marketing, but we think it has potential, we'll in invest in it uh, and, you know, sort of trade services for equity and say, look, we'll help you do this. We'll help you with the marketing. We'll help you with your social. We'll help you with, you know, we'll help manage your site. We'll do all these things that you need. Um, you know, we do that. We've done it a couple of times and, uh, and we're happy with doing that kind of stuff. So I love startups. I don't think I can ever get that out of my <laughs> blood. I, I don't like, I, I think I would have, I would die if I worked in a company that was so structured and organized. I like <laughs> yeah. the fact that my people feel like they can yell at me if I do something wrong. They, they can, if they come up with a great idea, they don't feel challenged about coming to me and saying, I think we should try this. I say, try it and we'll see what happens. Cause I don't sure. know what the answer is. That's my stock answer. I have no idea. Try it and see. And they're like, well, right. suppose it fails. I don't care. It's going to fail. Then we'll try something else, but we'll have some data and we know it's what doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> we'll know what doesn't work. 
So what are some, uh, what are some lessons I'm looking at your, your book that you just came out with empires and entrepreneurs? What, what are some lessons uh, along the way from people or entrepreneurs or business owners that have helped shape history? What, what are some insights that you can share with our listeners there? I, here, here's, I, I thought it was, a, I thought it was an interesting topic and it, what happened, here's how it started. Here's how it started. And, and it just came out literally. So yeah. And I, um, I was reading an article one morning about how uh, I love history. I love ancient history and all that. Mm-hmm. And I was reading this article about they were uncovering some uh, place out in, in Egypt. And it was about, you know, Pharaoh Tehotep. And they were talking about how he was an entrepreneur. And it struck my interest because I was like, what did this guy do? And well, he opened up channels of, of, of trade and he did all these things. So I started looking at researching, you know, all these entrepreneurs, people, we, we didn't use the term then, but just all these people that shaped society and shaped history. And I think entrepreneurship sometimes gets a bad rap. So the lesson is, you know, without some of these guys taking risks, putting their money wh- where their mouth is, you know, going out there, we wouldn't have half the conveniences we have today. You know, yeah. you, you start looking at what some of these guys did and the risks they took to get there. Um, obviously, the ancient times, risks were bigger than, you know, you could risk death and you could risk all kinds of things. Today, it's just about risking, you know, money and and stuff like that. But yeah. you, know, you look at, at some of the things that were done, even Ben Franklin and some of the things he did, he took a lot of risks to go out there and 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 create these small businesses, which turned into, you know, entire industries or created, mm-hmm. you know, printing presses and created, you know, uh, uh, lightning rods, which which saved, you know, houses and things. Like mm-hmm. that. So, you know, it's just, it was just a look back at what I thought were interesting. I didn't write the book for anybody but me, to be honest <laughs> with you. And then That's I just the best book. I felt yeah. published on uh, on Amazon. And, Did you, know, you use Chat GPT at all in your research? <laughs> no, you know, I somebody asked me asked me to do if I did that, but I said no because it wouldn't have been. I don't think it would have been as fun because what right. I, what yeah. the fun part was, you know, looking up and reading about and and sort of learning what these guys did. I think, you know, if I were going to write a book on, on, uh, on a, on a, another book using AI, I think I would write it on, here's how you use AI. Sure. Yeah. yeah. Right. Something like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. Have you, um, have you seen the hit, the, I think it's the history channel series, like the foods that built America, the, you know, mm-hmm. different things like that. It's a whole series. Yeah. I haven't read your book obviously yet, but it reminds me of that. Like they go through and they do a, like, Kellogg's and you know Hershey, you know for, for the foods that built America and like yeah, really well done I think series and they always pair like there's always a couple of entrepreneurs that are kind of doing similar things at the same time and they end yeah up, you know it's kind of like Microsoft and Apple or yeah like further back in the early 1900s is where a lot of their stuff or the fast food stuff where you know McDonald's and Taco Bell and these different ones were coming on kind of around the same time you know it's it's, yeah. it's interesting to see that kind of stuff and like Hershey I remember specifically Hershey you talk about risks and you know we think about risk today like the cost of entry or the barrier to entry is so low now yeah compared yeah. to what it was back then I remember mm-hmm. the Hershey episode he went out and bought I mean, hundreds of acres in central PA <clears throat> built an entire town to house yep. people to make the chocolate. And he didn't even have the formula for the chocolate yet. Yeah. And he <laughs> built an entire town and employed people knowing or assuming, you know, betting that he would figure it out, you know, based on some chocolate he tasted while he was over in Europe. I mean, yeah, that's, that's just ballsy. I mean, really. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's happened over and over again. I mean, it's the yeah. same thing like with the building of the pyramids. They built an entire town. Like there were everybody thinks that the pyramids were built by slaves, but they weren't. They, yeah. they actually built an entire town of people that were, you know, housed there to build the the, the pyramids. You know, now that wasn't necessarily entrepreneurship, but you know, when it when it comes down to, you know, when you look at how businesses run, if you don't have entrepreneurs and you just said forget about it. You know, we're never going to see another startup as long as we live. We're just going to go with all these staid businesses that we know we'd never, we'd never progress because businesses can't, they, they just, it's impossible for them to, um, you know, to come up with new ideas and, and innovate because they're afraid, 
right? Yeah. The CEO yeah. doesn't want to take the risk because it's going to it's going to ruin the stock price and it may affect his bonus, right? Everybody down the chain doesn't want to do anything because they they're afraid of losing their jobs and they're they don't want to take the risk. They don't want to be they don't want to fail, you know. And failure is uh, I've learned more. I'll tell you, my first business that I started when I was twenty seven was a complete and disgusting failure, but. Yeah. I know I'll never make those mistakes again. Sure, yeah, it's a learning lesson. <clears throat> yeah, man, you know, we, that's a yeah, that's good stuff. Go ahead, Jonathan. It, well, it, so I don't know if you've seen that movie. We recently talked about that movie, Air, the movie that uh, came out about the history behind Nike and Air Jordan. I don't know. Oh, if you had I, I didn't. I didn't. Fabulous movie. It's in fact, I think it's out on Amazon Prime now. So you should check it out, Phil. Over the weekend, you got to check it out. It's so good. Um, but it's just, it talks about that, you know, there was a lot of uh, examples of what you would probably refer to in the, in the risk, you know, and going out and like putting all your chips on one player who basically was just coming out of college, you know? Yeah. And, and most people, you know, had probably heard of him because he went to North Carolina. Yeah. They won a national championship, but, I mean, these guys gambled on one player. They like, we're not looking at anybody else but this one guy because I think he's going to be the best there is. And, you know, they made a shoe around him. You know, it's not like yeah. they just had him endorse a shoe. They went the yeah, opposite. We're going to create the shoe for you. Yeah. <laughs> it's going to have your name. <laughs> and before anybody was really doing that, too. Right? That's right. Yeah. You know, now, so, yeah. like, oh, yeah, obviously you find a good athlete, you give them yeah. a shoe deal, right? But right. back then that wasn't the case. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. no, I, I think Philip Knight's story in general is a great one, you know, going mm -hmm. and, and bringing those tiger shoes in from Japan and driving around with car and then, you know, <laughs> yeah. his, uh, his partner uh, making the waffle in the, <laughs> the waffle iron. Yeah. You know, and and, and uh, I, I love that whole story because yeah. I'm a big believer in, in lean startup mentality when you're doing things, you know, yeah. and, uh, you know, so I, I, I think I have a lot of respect for him. I think he's a great job. Yeah. Well, Phil, if you could give our listeners um, one piece of advice, you know, some sage wisdom, you know, that would make them ultimately crazy successful. <laughs> yeah. Um, what would what would that one one cent and one cent? Just it, right? like the magic bullet. <laughs> what would your magic bullet piece of wisdom? My be? magic bullet is build something, build your business around something that you're passionate about. Yeah. And just push it. Yeah. You know? yeah. Don't listen to naysayers. Push it. Yeah. 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 That, that, would you say, you know, some people would say, look for the market, but yeah. you're, I mean, is your opinion, market. you, yeah, you start the market, right? Or you, you start with your passion first and then you find ways to create, you know. Yeah. I mean, if you're passionate about something, you know, you, you're, you're, you're passionate about dog walking, right? Mm -hmm. You can start a business around that. If you're passionate about, you know, passionate about animals, you're passionate yeah. about whatever you're passionate about, you, there's a business in there. You know, you just I have agree. to look at it. I but, agree. But take what you're passionate about. Because if you're not passionate yeah. about it, you just want to do it. And and we, I see this all the time. I see guys that just want to start a business because they think there's something out there right. and they don't, they're not passionate about it. They don't understand it. They don't, they don't know the market. If there's right. something you're passionate about, you know the market. You've learned right. it. Yeah, I mean, I think I think probably one of the best examples in the last 10 years of that is Marie Kondo and her, you know, decluttering stuff. Like, oh, yeah. and she turned a billion dollar empire. I mean, create a billion dollar empire off of like, here's how you fold your t-shirts. Exactly. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's insane. It's yeah. But I mean, in, yeah. with the reach we have today, you know, I think passion is kind of in that same uh, yeah. world is is both um entertainment and humor like that's what attracts people like they mm -hmm. they want to see people they're so bored with their lives they want to see people who are passionate about something yeah and they and they live vicariously through them they're like oh maybe if i do that i'll have some happiness in my life you know or some passion yeah. in life. you look at so many there's a, a a young woman from australia that i watch i can't remember her name it's on on uh, youtube shorts she she started exercising. I think she had some sort of a health issue. She started exercising, and she started using doing jump ropes. Mm -hmm. And uh, suddenly, you know, she starts doing all this uh, 
fancy work with jump ropes. Yeah. And I mean, it's just beautiful to watch what she does. She does, she's got great music with it and she does these fantastic things with it, but she was passionate about jump and rope and she turned it into a mini business. Sure. Just now she moves lessons online and, you know, That's to crazy. all these young women. And so it's great. You know, you get passionate about something, you learn the market, you know, the market. Right. Uh, there's a million examples like the uh, decluttering because there's the, the woman i can't remember her name off the top of my head but you know very famous another one they made a movie about she started with the huggable hangers on home shopping network turned it into a multi-billion dollar company you know she uh it was those and then she came out with a different broom and you know just household chores to make her life easier and yeah. huge huge business yeah you mm -hmm. got martha stewart you got you know yeah you know, joanna gaines with you know magnolia now they got their own tv network like it's yeah, exactly. you know it's it's uh yeah, it's, I think um, it's so counterintuitive to kind of the college route where it's like, well, which, which major is going to get me the most money when I graduate? Like, yeah. and there's no heart in it. So yeah, I think yeah. Get, getting that heart back into it definitely makes a, makes a huge difference. So yeah. Well, Phil, what's the best place um, for people to find out more about you and, and uh, follow your work? Well, you could, you could uh, go to crunchgrowth.com. Or I actually have another site, philmassiello.com, mm -hmm. which is focused more on uh, entrepreneurship. Um, so, yeah. Very cool. And, uh, there, uh, There's a pop-up somewhere that, that comes up. Maybe maybe you clicked it off. But there's a yeah. pop-up um, that you can get. Uh, I, I built this free um, sort of a, a planner for your startups if you want to start. Oh, uh, if you're going to do a startup. There's a planner on there. Mm -hmm. you, know, you can put, you could certainly if if you clicked off the pop up and it doesn't come up anymore, I'll I'll, be, I'll put a page up for it. But um, you can down it, you put your email address in and I'll send it to you and it's for free. And it's just a it just I think the reason I did it was because when you I I listen to a lot of these young guys and they're talking about their planning and they they get these business planning apps and tools and they're just garbage. And you just waste your money. And I said, look, here's all you need to know. And it's it's like 10 pages. It's a PDF. You can fill it out. It's a it's a, a fillable PDF on uh, when you download it. And uh, yeah, it's I love a good that. Little thing. Yeah, I remember it popping up when I first went on, but I, I closed it. So it's it's not uh, that's show up the second time. But yeah, that's my cup of tea. Keep it simple. And it's <laughs> Phil P H I L Masiello M A S I E L L o.com yes those that are listening and not watching the video all right well this has been fun um Thanks, Phil. man yeah, appreciate you joining us i could i could talk to you all day but uh, i'll let you i will let you get back to press the wrong button there all right i'll let you get back to your pellegrino <laughs> finished hey. it. God, i killed it <laughs> yeah, I, I appreciate it, guys. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed yeah, it's it. Yeah, it's fun. It's great talking AI, and I need, I'm going to check out your book. Um, I love like books like that where it's history yeah. history and entrepreneurship, two of my yeah. favorite topics. So Yeah, I've got the Amazon yeah, page great. open, so I'm ready to, ready to press the <laughs> order. Um, yeah. Reminds me, it feels kind of like a Robert Greene type book, too, mm -hmm. you know, with the historical examples. I love those kind of books because yeah. it, it shows the timelessness of the ideas. Yep. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. definitely going to grab that one as well. Yeah. I appreciate it. Well, th thanks so much. We're going to send you temporarily, if you don't mind waiting for like a, about a less than a minute, we're going to send you to our green room. And Sean and I are going to wrap up this episode and uh, we'll uh, follow back up with you after. I appreciate it. Thank All you. Right. Thanks, Phil. Bye. That is uh, Phil Masiello, Mas Masiello of uh, Crunch Growth. We'll be posting some links. Good episode. Yeah. Pretty cool to uh, talk to a guy like that. He's done some really fun stuff. It's a real deal right there. Yeah, absolutely. It's been good. Um, so I think it's time to close out, Sean. Any yeah. closing comments? Our Let's see. Are we going to? Are you traveling next week? I believe yeah, I'm traveling next week. So yeah. We'll so work. we'll be knocking. Well, listen, off listen to week. this episode twice. <laughs> some good stuff in there. That's right. That's right. Sean's gonna be looking for some uh, some places down in the Orlando area. So Tampa, that'll be fun. Tampa area. Oh, Tampa. That's right. Tampa. Yeah. Tampa moving Tampa. back east. Get on the Eastern Time Zone again. Back in that uh, nice, uh, warm, <laughs> sunny Florida weather. That's yeah. Sunshine State. 
I miss the bugs, you know, I want to get back to the bugs. (laughs) All right. Well, to all of our listeners, hope you have a great weekend. Um, You can find us persuasion by the pint.com. Like I said, we'll be uh, taking off a week uh, next week, but uh, we'll be back in action the following. Hope everyone has a great weekend. And um, Sean, take care, man. Have a great weekend. See ya. All right. Did you freeze? I think Jonathan froze. I see you're still there, Phil. Hold on. I think Jonathan froze.